It's time to live the legend of Odo Nobunaga. Like all historical legends, it might be considered three parts truth to seven parts fiction, but the power and message of the story remains nonetheless. It's a legend of lessons to live by. We're going to explore the legend through the epic telling portrayed in Kesson 3, developed by Koei Studios and released in 2004. Part strategy game, part RPG, part historical drama. In this Let's Play, we'll see the action unfold, and I hope to provide some of the missing historical perspective and highlight the surprising truth of the tale. So who was Oda Nobunaga? We can see how he lived simply by seeing how he died. Let's play Kesson 3. You will not stop me! Run! Ah! Understood! Don't let him get away! and punish them. Hmm. I will follow you as soon as I am able to. Run! Run! Don't let it be for nothing. You must live on. Fulfilled your dream. You were wrong. Your dream ends here forever. I know this shrine well. I suspect better than anyone. Dreams are reality. Reality is like the dream of a butterfly. But then, in chaos, neither dreams nor reality exist. There is no destiny. So now we've seen how Nobunaga supposedly dies, we're going to see how he begun his rise to prominence. I'm going to let the game tell the story itself for the most part, but I will add that Nobunaga began as a young prince, the son of the head of the Oda clan. And we need to keep that in mind. I don't think the game explains that very well, who he is in the beginning. That he's a man born into power. Fire. Ravenous flames. Deadly, purified flames. I've been here before. At my very first battle. The princess is not in this village! Widen the search! If we don't find her, Lordy Magawa is sure to have our heads! Jumping into a raging fire like that, how foolish can you be? My, my 
True hero, save the girl. The rest is up to you. Come now, can't you even protect one little girl? Nobunaga was known as the fool of Owari. He was known for his eccentricity at a young age. So it's sort of um, historically correct that he should be doing crazy things like jumping into burning buildings. This is our world. Worthless people fight and die for worthless ambition. He was also supposedly a man of the people. It is famous that despite his princely status, he would often spend time with normal people. You must not. You're still young. You must not put yourself in such danger. Don't concern yourself with that. Let's go! So these men are are Nobunaga's retainers. So as prince, he would have groups of people assigned to him to help him develop, because one day he would have to have a ruling position. Uh, so he would have these mentors, so to speak. <laughs> this will be fun. I, I will do my best as well. Idiots! The little fools don't know the first thing about fighting. Let's go! <laughs> so what's happening here? The game doesn't do a very good job of explaining it. So Nobunaga has come across a village that has been attacked by troops belonging to the Imagawa clan, a neighboring clan to Oda's territory. Uh, they are both ruled by the same Shugo, and the Shugos are like military deputies of the ruling shogunate of Japan. So they, they share a link, but uh, the clans were fiercely fighting at this period. This is the Sengoku Judai era when the clans began to turn against each other and uh, fierce rivalries broke out. But uh, I'll save the story for a bit because I want to talk about the game. So if you can see the game's pretty simple. I'm just moving this block which represents Nobunaga's forces and I just run into this enemy block and essentially, well, hit them. I just, uh, I press a button which hits. You can choose to do light and heavy hits and what I just did was my special attack which you can do whenever you want. Uh, but the disadvantage is it has to charge up, and if your attack boss is charging, you lose a lot of men. Uh, the men can essentially be considered health, which is why this game is very RPG-like. So that Imagara uh, lieutenant has fallen back. Let me just check something a second. Right, let's push on. So I need to break through this barricade, and there's not much more to that than just running at it and uh, pressing the attack button. You can see all the men uh, start hitting it to represent my forces attacking it, and I've broken through and we continue on. So the game looks pretty shallow at first, there are some much more deep elements to it, obviously it's mainly RPG style elements, which is why I consider this game an RPG rather than a strategy game, although your strategy does become more and more important. Uh, one RPG element, which I'm showing you right here, is that if I go off down this river I can find items, there are like chests and you can move your, your little groups around to pick up these chests. So I just found a bind primer and that's an item which if I equip it, it will allow me to learn a new ability. So like in an RPG, all of your characters will have special abilities which they can use and you can use them a certain amount of times per battle and they recharge over time. There's a, a big variety of things. Some of them are supernatural sort of things. The actual battles, well and that was a, a, a health recovery. So. It said I recovered troops, so it's, it's very uh, non-realistic. Essentially, troops are considered as health points. Um, yeah, it has supernatural elements. The battles are non-canon. Like, things that happen in the battles can be considered almost separate from the actual the actual lore of the game, because they're so strange. A bit of lag there. I'm playing this on an emulator, because I don't have my uh, PlayStation at the moment. This is for the PS2. Ooh, I just took a very heavy hit. Um, Unfortunately, it lags slightly in places. I'm going to, uh, once I finish this recording, do a few tests to see if I can reduce the lag. I think I know a few ways. Uh, it's, it's when there are multiple enemy units on the screen that it gets a little bit angry. So I've got all these enemy units here. And I'm just going to rush through, take them out. And you can see the little numbers appearing as you hit the enemy units, which are like the damage points. So very RPG-like in that regard as well. So I can do this, jump my horses in. That's one of the, the power attacks. I can also use these special abilities. So let's uh, show that. I'm going to use Rally on myself. Victory is within our grasp. It's an attack buff, so that just increases the attack the of this, this, uh, this unit or character. And 
there we go. So there's one more enemy to defeat. Uh, it's the enemy commander, uh, Yatsumoto Asahina. So I just break into his camp. And there he is, he has uh, some spear units. Theoretically effective against cavalry, but I don't think uh, the game Your takes that into account. The time for you to die has come. And he's trash talking. <laughs> Not very good trash talking, to be honest. And he sends his, uh, his levy spear units. You can tell the different classes of people in the armies because when they're wearing those little hats with the curtains on them, that means they're Ashigaru troops, which are either conscripted or levied or volunteered, but they're, they're untrained basically, they're peasant soldiers. Ooh, that was a, a heavy hit. Um, yeah, they're, they're peasant soldiers, you won't be able to do very much. But obviously the game isn't particularly realistic tactically. Well, I just took a very uh, a big knock back there. Actually losing a fair bit of health. I'm going to have to uh, work on taking this guy down. Let's cavalry charge him. Oh, he fell back. There we go, got a good strike on him anyway. Um, yeah, so the, the, the curtain helmets represent the, the class of people below the samurai class. So, as you may know, Japan had a warrior culture in this period, so being a samurai would put you socially above the peasant people, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. The samurai people live a much harder lifestyle than the lower classes, if you want to see them now. Uh, they were much more harsh and were treated more badly. Impossible. My skills are second to none. But of course, in the Bushido culture, they were more respected. So that's what you got for Celebrate. living as a samurai. Victory is ours! So that was an easy victory. That was the first level. Captured the enemy encampment. So now we're going to see uh, a lot more of the RPG elements in the battle aftermath. I don't need an explanation. So you see, it shows you the officers you defeated. Uh, got a couple. And then you get this uh, thing which ranks you on your battle skills. And you get an item based on your rank. So I got the Jabonji Spear item and a thousand gold. Uh, so here are the items I got, and there's the bind primer that I found in that river. And you can see my characters level up, which is another RPG element, and they have three statistics, only three. Uh, warfare, intelligence, and st I think that's stamina. Uh, I guess I'll save my game. I created a separate save. I've made a, a test save already, and I was making sure the game worked. Yeah, so it, it definitely has big RPG elements like that. You level up your characters, and they learn abilities and things like that. The enemy ranks are starting to crumble. It won't be long before the entire country is ours. <laughs> Don't be a fool. This was nothing but a little skirmish. My lord, it's all your fault. You dress like that and give him stupid ideas. Don't shut up. I'm sick of hearing that. <laughs> Still, I have to agree with Yoshinari. Fighting insignificant rabble is a waste of time. An ambitious man. I'll fight to end the chaos and the fighting. Declaring his ambition here. This world here. will know peace. I swear it. I love this moment. Shoots the sky and it clears. Very symbolic of something. Who knows? So we're saying Nobunaga wanting to take over the world. Possibly not that uh, realistic. Oh, well, that little worried brat. Thanks to him, that little girl from Mino got away from me. How dare he have the gall to interfere with my plans? I shall have to think carefully about how to repay him. So there was the Imagawa commander, Portugal, our current enemy. Spain. The great powers of Europe had entered a period of exploration and expansion. In Japan, both little and great lords joined in battle to decide the fate of their clans. The ruling Ashikaga shogunate lacked the power to control the lords, and in the fighting and plundering, the common people suffered and died. The Warring States. The common people dreamt of a savior, a hero who would save them from the fighting. Guess who it's gonna be, guys? <laughs> yeah, so he is supposed to be a hero, Nobunaga Uda, hero Body. of the people. This land, situated in the center of Japan, Not so true, but was we'll also talk about the that center later. of the fighting. This is where Nobunaga is from, fought for control, right in the middle. While really across annoying the border, spot. The larger powers of Saito and Imagawa looked eagerly on for a chance to make it their own. Amidst this cauldron of war, the Oda clan sought to gain powerful allies, 
by arranging the marriage of the legitimate heir, Nobunaga, to the princess of the I'm not sure this aspect is true. I'm not sure it is, this political marriage story aspect, but... Both parties agreed. It will link into a true aspect of the story. So this is the second level, and uh, since this is the first episode of this Let's Play, I'm going to do the first two levels rather than just a single level. Because that first level was a bit disappointing anyway. And who are we here? A female character. There are very few female characters, but this is uh, one of the most important ones. Yes. Apparently she started learning early. They say she took to it. Indeed, it's a warrior princess. But it would pay Probably inaccurate. Careful. I don't know. You but you'd feel like that's someday. an inaccurate uh, My Lord, aspect. I understand what you're going through. Oh, what can you do? There were uh, female the warriors in this time period. Huh? They tended to be uh, an elite that fought very danger. infrequently, particularly defending areas. Wonderful start this is. So you notice on, that his wife. The, the party carrying his wife is being attacked by another member of the Order Clan. Because the Order Clan was not very solid. It had lots of internal disputes. Lord, especially because of Nobunaga. I'll explain Knowing that in the battle. Yes, before each battle you have a war council where you try and work out what you're going to do for the rest of the level. Alright, allow me to describe the situation. And your retainers will uh, give you some advice. We will win if we defeat the enemy commander. If any of our allies are routed, we will have lost. Some pretty basic advice. The enemy commander, Nobukiya Oda, has drawn up his troops Nobukiya. in this area. I can't remember if he's the father or the brother. I think it's the brother of Nobunaga. Nobunaga was the heir to the clan, but there were many pride. people they who did not like lives. the fact he was the heir, because he was Lord, pretty crazy as a person. So it's asking me how to deploy. I think you, you get very limited options to do tactically at the beginning of the game. And I, I don't need the tutorial. So basically it gives you some spots you're allowed to deploy on. And you have this this roster of characters you're allowed to use. And as you use them they become like tired and worn down. And if they die in battle, uh, you can still use them later. But they're, they're sort of half dead when they come back to the battlefield. So you have to try and do things to bring them back to health before you can redeploy them. But at the moment I have no choice, so I'm going to deploy Toshie here. And supporting him, I'm going to deploy Nagahide. The game works, uh, you have a command unit and a support unit joined to it by a little line. And you can see the command unit's icon is slightly bigger to represent that. So the support unit will follow the command unit and uh, help it out on its objectives. So I can actually give them objectives, I think. I need to move uh, back orders. So I'm going to order them to just uh, move up to the center. Pretty fair. And myself, I'm going to move up to the center. So we're going to link up at the crossroads here. And that's how we're going to start the battle. And we'll see how that goes and get the lay of the land. So I can change my equipment. Here's the uh, another RPG -E aspect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give uh, Toshie Maida. Instead of the Suyari Spear, I'm going to give him the Jumanji Spear. Because it's ever so slightly better. So that was the thing I won in the last battle. There we go, we're basically ready. Uh, let me just continue what I was saying. So Nobunaga was hated by his family. Well, maybe not hated. What he did was, at his father's funeral, when his father died, he caused a stir. He was throwing things around during the funeral ceremony and being a bit of a nonsense. And, uh, not, not a nuisance, sorry. And he was doing things that were nonsense. Uh, yeah. So his, his brothers and many of the retainers and supporters of the Oda clan came to dislike him and there was sort of a split between those who wanted Nobunaga to inherit the clan's uh, leadership as he should or someone who wanted one of his brothers to take it instead. And I think Nobukiya Oda is one of those brothers. Uh, so they were turned against each other. The game doesn't really make that clear to be honest. Uh, yeah and also what happened was because his behavior was so bad the man who had been assigned to bring Nobunaga up like one of his mentors who was teaching him etiquette was so embarrassed that Nobunaga's behavior was so disgraceful that he actually committed harikiri or seppuku the Japanese ritual suicide over this incident at the funeral 
and this moved Nobunaga and sort of made him less of a renegade. He became more serious after this event. Um, I think this takes place before the game starts, so we're seeing the more serious form of Nobunaga. Uh, Nobunaga, of course, was a tactical genius. He was a very able commander, which will explain many of his feats in the game. And even at this age, he was an able commander, and he wasn't so inclined to diplomacy. He would take rash action and often uh, benefit from that, that decision. So less about that. We'll see more of the legendaries as we go. Let's play this level. Start the battle. I have played this game before in the distant past, uh, but I don't remember this, very much. I'm going to try and give a competent playing of the Our game, obviously, and show you as many you secrets, etc. as I can find. Now go. Sir. So we are ready to go. Also, you can change all the outfits and stuff. It's very, like, dressy uppy. It's quite fun. But I have to unlock these outfits and you can buy them and sorts of things. So now here we go. Chance to finish them. Charge them. <laughs> Simple orders, but that is a characteristic orders for Nobunaga. So the AI has taken control because I've already gave some orders. Will you view the battle tutorial? No, I won't. I thought, I thought the last level was tutorial. So I can see an enemy unit, so I'm going to take personal control and head towards it. There's a group of people standing out in the middle of these planes. It's an Inuyama lieutenant. I'm not sure who the Inuyama are, actually. Let's charge up a uh, charge attack. Oh, it was not very effective. They, they hit me in advance. Let's hit them back. Oh, charge my attack and then advance. And you can see uh, Yoshinari Mori, my trusted retainer. Oh, <laughs> I knocked all his troops down. Your, your units are much less effective if they're out of formation. And you can press a button to try and get your people to reform their formation after a heavy attack. I just keep hitting this guy, let's get rid of him. Alright, let's head on. It's also important to look around. Like, look around yourself, look for items to pick up. There could have been some right back down where I started, but I can't be bothered to go back at this stage. I can see a, what a health restoring now? item in the center. Right, so I can see on the on the mini-map on the right-hand side that my allies are moving up, and they've defeated Nobukata Oda. I think that's almost definitely one of my brothers. They could be a cousin or something. So what I'm going to do is, while those guys secure the center, I'm going to head up this wing and see if there's anything there. I, well, I can see an enemy unit. Alright, so they're now securing the center. I'm going to just leave them for a minute and I'll go and link up with them after I... Snobby Asa Oda! That's got to be one another one of my brothers. Here we go, I'm going to charge right through him. There we go, that decimated his unit. His formation uh, lasted quite well. I guess they reformed quickly. So let's take them out. I can see something up ahead. There we go, there is an, an item box to pick up. So it paid off going down this route. So that's another uh, rebel member of the Oda clan. This is sort of represent representing how Nobunaga rose to power. He did in fact defeat all of his brothers in various ways uh, and, and come to rule the Oda clan right when he was very young. He, was, uh, he wasn't going to inherit the clan so young but his father died very, very suddenly by surprise. Uh, people didn't really expect him to have to take over the clan at this age. I'm not sure how old he is actually at this stage, probably about 20. And uh, he, by the time he died, he was about forty. This, this is not good. Where is Forty-seven, I think, actually. So the wedding party has been defeated. Big problem, or is it? Right here we go. I can see some enemy troops up ahead. Ooh, I'm going to attempt to remember the controls as I give orders to my allies. Here we go. So Toshi Maeda, he is the the crazy long-haired one who's been shouting things. By the way, it's quite hard to remember their names to begin with, but you get used to it. So I'm going to ask him to move up the left side, and then I'm going to move up the right. So I'm going to go uh, move up this side of the canyon. He's going to support me against Bongo Najima and Hariyoshi Oda. He must be another cousin. Oh, let's charge up. Yeah, we seem to get a tiny bit of lag when uh, when we face two units at a time, two enemy units at a time in particular. So I'm going to have to uh, try and deal with that for the next episode. It's not too bad at the moment. There we go. That's them destroyed. And the, uh, the Oda unit is being attacked by Toshie. And he is uh, taking heavy damage. I can very easily finish him off. So you can see the battles like aren't really representative of battles at all. They're just like very basic RPG style combat. I need to reform. The icon up at the top uh, next to my name where there's uh, nine blobs is representing the formation strength and the nine bobs uh, drift further and further apart as your formation weakens. So here we go, I'm outside the enemy camp. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to order my other unit to rush down and try and take out that bow tower. And they're going to smash through the fence in order to do that. And whilst they uh, come up, let me check. I think I should be able to... Oh, here we go. I have... Um... Oh, this is something special. You can use a rampage ability. Uh, this uses your characters specifically. You take control of one of your characters as an individual and run out into the enemy lines to see what you can do. And that's quite fun. I might try and show you how that works. I'll, I'll do that on the enemy commander. Oh look, I can just I can just come in. Okay, I'm going to use it right now just to show you how it is. I'm not sure if this is a good time to use it. But I, uh, the enemy is in range. Maybe I have to be right next to them. Oh, something's happening. Nobunaga! Your dream is about to become a nightmare! <laughs> Big talk from this guy. So let's, uh, oh, he's charged quite well into me. It's given some hits. And now let's try and use Rampage. I can use it on either of them. I'm going to use it on Nobikyu for now. I can't quite remember how this works. I shall bring in so here we go. I'm here as an individual, and I'm now rushing through these enemy units and just cutting them down. I think it, uh, I can't remember what it does. It might restore some of your, like, magic points. You basically, if you use special abilities, you have magic points. And you have about, you have four, and an ability uses, like, one or two. And I think, at some point, through doing this, you can restore them. And you pick up special things, like I just picked up a restore troops ability. Oh, it's lacking quite badly in this section. I'll have to do something about that later on. So basically, I'm uh, just using my horse to charge down these enemy spear units. Extremely unrealistic. And they're dropping little power-ups. Dearing me. So I'm going to pick up some of these power-ups. Uh, that was earn experience and earn gold. So I'm upping the amount of experience and gold I'm going to get from the end of this battle by doing these little sequences. So they're quite good. And also, the, the enemy troops I defeat uh, get taken away from the enemy. Ah, Nobikyu himself has come out. I forgot about this. You can actually fight with the enemy officers. And I don't remember what happens if you defeat them, but we're going to try and find out. I'm going to hit at him a few times. Oh, he's, he's hitting back at me. Okay, we did about equal damage to each other. Ah, but I found some help. Some little uh, rice cakes on the floor. Not rice cakes, uh, rice buns. Let's move around. Where are they? Here we go. Your horse does damage as you walk, which is one of the uh, key ways to actually take out enemies. I, I remember from when I played this game that there's a certain way of fighting with enemy officers on horseback. Um, like a good way of doing it, but obviously I can't remember what that is. Hope that finds out again. I am going to uh, play this game a little bit off camera as well. I wonder if I can do anything else. Okay, I have a different type of attack. Press triangle. Uh, the triangle button to do other things. What about circle? Whoa, something's happening. Oh, this is like a special rampage attack. Whoa, I'm jumping up. Whoa, wings, what the hell's going on? Okay, so something big just happened. That's what happens when you press circle. Um, I have no idea how many times I can do that. I think it looked like it expended one of the blobs up beside my name. The enemy officer's almost dead. He's down. I did it. Um, I think that means that that's going to have some sort of impact on the battle once we get back out of this little sequence. Of which there's only three seconds left. So I'm just going to hit some enemies. Just get my last uh, kills. There we go. Nobuki Oya successfully defeated. His condition dropped to normal. Okay, that's what it does. Each character has a condition which defines how well they can fight. And the condition depends on how well they're doing in the battle, how well they did in previous battles, and from special effects happening to them. Well, I really need my support to come in. Let's try something else. Let's use a, a berate to decrease the enemy's attack Your value. So this is a debuff I can use on the enemy. <laughs> now let's try something else. Um, press some buttons. Here we go, I can switch to control a different character. So let's control Yoshinari Mori. He can move in. Uh, so Nobunaga is now controlled by the AI, and I can see what things he can do. I could do another rampage, but I can't be bothered to at this stage. Maybe later in the game when it's more important to, I'll do multiple rampages per battle. So I can use a war cry to reduce their defense. I'll do it, do it on the enemy commander. You might learn something. So it's sort of just like a magic spell. It just, it just reduces their defense magically. Raise them. So I press yes L2 to switch. So let's get Toshi and my dart in on the action. We're going to really uh, surround these guys, hit them from many sides. Let's see if he has any special... Oh, it's telling me to press R1. I press R1. Okay. Um, if you have a missile unit behind you, press R1, it gives you supporting fire. I've just remembered, slash discovered. What's going on here? 
hit enemy she's troops are in fast. trouble. She's floating like a butterfly, but she no. is deadly. This is a warrior princess. Uh, so she wasn't dead. She was just hiding in the snow. And she hates her outfit as well. But she never takes it off for the entire game. Actually, no, she does change it, I think. Vaguely. Can't quite remember. I am Kicho, my lord. Kicho. As was agreed, I present myself so to Kicho you. So Kicho actually oh. was one of Nobunaga's 20 wives. I think it was supposed to be her favourite wife, which is why they chose her for the female lead in this huh. game. I believe this may work out. Kicho! And he's very impressed with her. Uh, yes, he had loads of wives, and she was the favourite. What happened? I don't know whether now? she was actually a princess of the Saito clan in Mino. I think this battle might be vaguely representing the fact the is over. that Nobunaga Everyone helped the Saito well. clan when they uh, they had an internal conflict. And Nobunaga attempted to help one of the sides of that internal conflict. And I think he failed. In fact, the side he is supporting lost. So maybe... I don't know, the... The relationship through Saito in the political alliance in this game is somehow related to the true historical events. Obviously I can't be sure. So there we go, I got a rank S. I did pretty well. I've unlocked Ginkgo Spears and Kunibito Armor. Oh yeah, that's right. You you basically have to equip troops to your characters. So you can change what sort of troops they, they command. And that is essentially like changing their weapon. Uh, but it does, it does different things depending on what troops you, you use, etc. As, as you might expect. So here we go, I've unlocked Ginkgo Spears, so I can use them as, as a troop type. They're sort of these... I don't know, they, don't, they don't wear many clothes, they're just wearing a loincloth and a chest plate. Pretty casual. I've unlocked this new set of armor, looks pretty sweet. Shows you what it looks like on Nobunaga. Sort of gold and black, I quite like that, I might equip that. I've also unlocked this accessory, the Jikokuten Talisman. Lengthens enemy confusion during a rampage. Not particularly useful. Here we go. Now I have four characters in the battle. They're all leveling up like mad. Pretty sweet and I'll save my game. So that's the end of this opening episode of Kesson 3 Let's Play. I hope you've uh, you've learned a little bit about the uh, Sengoku Jutai period. And this is the, only the beginning of Nobunaga's legend. We're going to continue on and just see how, how the game treats his legend and how it differs how it's similar to the, the real story of Oda Nobunaga and also how it treats Japanese culture, how it displays what life was like in the Sengoku Jukai period, which I think is a very interesting period in, in sort of world history. It's a unique, a unique situation where you have a big warrior culture that suddenly turns on itself uh, with obviously the famous samurai being at the center of the action and the very strange political system of clans Shugos, Shoguns, and the Emperor, which will all be explained in due time. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want some more of Nobunaga's adventures, then tune in next time. See you later!